The grueling push into Europe following the Normandy invasion is depicted in this sculpture scaling the wall. At the top, a soldier struggles to pull himself into the memorial's victory plaza. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The triumphant arch celebrates the end of five years of war and the defeat of Nazi Germany. What you see here is, is the, the arch, uh, 44 feet, 6 inches tall, the name of Overlord inscribed for the operation itself, Operation Overlord, and then the black and white striping, again very symbolic of D-Day because all of the aircraft on D-Day were striped in that manner. Below the arch, the traditional reminder of those lost on the road to victory, the work is called Final Tribute. This sculpture is representative of those graves and how they were marked during World War II with the M1 Grand inverted upside down with the helmet on top and the dog tags hanging from it uh, to mark those temporary graves. And we would lose over 400,000 soldiers during World War II, so this is a very solemn place here at the monument where a lot of people come to remember. Overhead, the flags of the Allied nations remind visitors of the forces that came together to win the war and the sheer geographical vastness of the operation in comparison to today's conflicts. Then, with the arch behind them, visitors finally arrive at this artwork, named for the memorial's themes, valor, fidelity, and sacrifice. As you can see on his hand, is the only bit of color on any of the statues here with his gold wedding band, and really representative of fidelity to, to country, to comrade to loved ones, and we think that really embodies what it means to, to serve. It's a place, too, where visitors can place a flag in remembrance of their own loved ones or in honor of those serving now. Petty Officer Lori Bent, DOD News.